how we want to get out of here. Remember that Fairview is racist. Well, I'm trapped. Well, we can go independent. I don't know a way to avoid Fairview, though. I know how to go. Actually, I know. Um, yeah, but it's too late now. If we go on, on 77, it might be. No, but I'm talking about Hawthorne, and um, you can go all the way down Providence and then hang a right on 51. What way? Okay. What's over here? Stop signs. And houses? Yeah. Are people live on this street? They just would tell us where they they would just tell us you know they would just have us have the um, we would find the tee with our clubs and then they would put the ball on the tee and then we would hit it. Okay. Oh, the uh, weekly driving range season is starting up soon. I wanted to take it to the driving range, put one of those beep, 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 beep things on there, and let you swing at it. How far does Commonwealth go? stuff to do or else I would say let's find out. Road ends in 1600 feet. Oh, okay. Now you know. So it goes to... That's why I always go this way. It goes to East Way? It goes that way in 1600 feet. And it... 
What road is this? This here? Woodland. Oh, so it goes to Woodland. Oh, that's where we had to come take DC. put these kind of speed bumps on Marvin Road and they did it in the middle of the night too I wonder why why what why they did that because people were using it as a shortcut and they were going way too fast for that road okay that makes sense they were endangering the citizens yeah STS to work and there were speed bumps club in their car. Yeah. So tomorrow we're going to do uh, locks. Locks again? Yeah. Okay. Smokey said that's the worst one in the chain. <laughs> I know why. Same reason that the KFC sucks. And the Chick-fil-A is not up to par. You know what? What? And I'm, I suspect that the answer would be that there are exceptions to every rule. But, yeah, we say that, and it's true, but, yeah, there's Marvin Road over there, but the Bojangles on Tryon is like the same demographics, but, you know, it's one of the most efficient ones. You know that they got ripped off the night before we were there? Yeah, the I was going, there were, I guess there were a couple of homes there, Oh. Yeah. 
Yep. But you know, it's the mo it's, it's the most wonderful time of the year. But that bow jangles I always make the yeah, you know, they don't lie about the bow rounds like the one in Pineville does. You know, they don't give you crappy tiny dry chicken tenders like the one on Randolph does. But, I mean, is that the exception that proves the rule, though? Enjoy. What? Too bad it's 70, but you know what? When your expectations are low, you're happier. Yep. I want to go in here and get shitty chicken. You get great chicken and you're happy. Yep. So you keep up with that information about when that thing is going to be. I'm going to listen to the news. Okay. News in Washington. I'm Lakshmi Singh. The White House is standing by its threat to withhold more weapons if Israel launches a full-scale invasion of Rafa, a southern Gaza city where more than a million Palestinians displaced by the Israel-Hamas war are taking refuge. National Security Council spokesman John Kirby defended President Biden's position today. An enduring defeat on Hamas certainly remains the Israeli goal, and we share that goal with them. Smashing into Rafa, in his view, will not advance that objective, will not get to that sustainable, enduring defeat of Hamas. On the eve of Israel's Independence Day, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said in a video message that his country is strong enough to fight alone if it has to. Stormy Daniels has finished testifying in New York. Prosecutors say former President Donald Trump greenlighted hush money payment to the adult film actress during the 2016 campaign to keep silent about their alleged sexual encounter years earlier. NPR's Andrea Bernstein reports the defense repeatedly confronted Daniels with inconsistencies in her story over the years. On Tuesday, Daniels had described feeling a power imbalance when she saw Trump in his underwear in his hotel room. Defense attorney Susan Necklace lit into Daniels, asking her why she hadn't talked about that in a 2011 interview with In Touch magazine, never published. But Daniels held her ground, saying it was an abbreviated interview. At the end of the cross-examination, Necklace asked, isn't the reason your story keeps changing because you never had an affair with President Trump and realized you could make money from selling your story? No, Daniels said. Prosecutors then came back with their own line of questioning, emphasizing consistencies in Daniel's story. On balance, has your publicly telling the truth been a net positive or a net negative in your life? The prosecutor asked. Negative, Daniel said. Andrea Bernstein, NPR News, New York. In Haiti, the country's newly minted transitional council's walking back some decisions. It says it'll re-elect a transitional prime minister and it may consider a rotational presidency. NPR's Ada Peralta reports the capital is experiencing relative calm. The streets of Port-au-Prince are remarkably normal. There's traffic and sellers on the streets, kids head to school, adults to work. But on our ride across the city, we spot two dead bodies on the side of the road. The local morgue is worked by gangs, so sometimes bodies just stay there. At a park near the National Palace, the talk is all about the international peacekeeping force expected to deploy in the coming weeks. Some say it'll cause more problems nor do they want foreign troops here. But Jean Adejan shouts that he is sick of the violence. Send us heavily armed men, he says. He was forced out of his home by warring gangs. All he wants, he says, is peace, no matter how it comes. Ada Pralta, NPR News, Port-au-Prince. This is NPR. This is WFAE News. I'm Kenneth Lee. I know he sounds Stay like a mic going, but I want to hear the local news. Budget early next month. For now, at least. WUNC's Rusty Jacobs has more. 
Senate President Pro Tem Phil Berger told reporters today lawmakers will have a better sense in a couple of weeks of whether the budget process will, in his words, go off the rails or stay on target for completion by the start of the fiscal year on July 1st. Berger also said while legislators have not entirely ruled out using some of the state's $1 billion plus surplus for rebates for North Carolina households, he does not think it is likely. I don't think there'd be uh, an interest in doing it unless the amount we could send out would be uh, an amount that would make a difference, you know, more than a half a tank of gas and stuff like that. Berger said the Senate probably won't take up any votes again until later next week. I'm Rusty Jacobs. North Carolina officials say 450,000 people have now signed up for Medicaid expansion in the state. The number represents three-fourths of the people eligible. Governor Roy Cooper's office said in a press release this morning that says December 1st last year, Medicaid has covered more than 1 million prescriptions for new enrollees. The Federal Aviation Administration said storms moving across the north and south again today might cause flight delays across the east coast. Charlotte Douglas International Airport is currently in a log jam. According to the flight tracking website FlightAware, 463 flights have been delayed and 25 have been canceled today. For the latest updates, check cltairport.com. Flight aware is the Canapolis Cannonballers yep. will be in action tonight and are looking to end a four-game losing streak. Tonight they'll take on the Delmarva Shortbirds for game three of a six-game series. First pitch at Atrium Home Ballpark is at 6.30. And this evening, you can expect partly cloudy conditions and a low around 34, 64 degrees. What's the name of it? Right now, it's overcast. Flight aware. Degrees in Charlotte. Flight aware. Flight aware. Support for NPR comes from NPR stations. Other contributors include Procter & Gamble, maker of z Pure Z's Gummies, designed with melatonin for occasional sleeplessness to help people fall asleep naturally. Learn more at z This is NPR. You're listening to 90.7 WFAE, Charlotte's NPR News Source. This is All Things Considered from NPR News. I'm Ari Shapiro. And I'm Mary Louise Kelly. Israel's closure of the main border crossing with Gaza has trapped American medical teams in Rafah while aid officials report an ever worsening humanitarian crisis unfolding. As NPR's Jana Raff reports, seasoned medical volunteers are facing heartbreaking decisions. And a warning this story contains references to district.
off of the conversation when I went to the doctor. Guess who was Dr. Craven telling me what a great guy you are. Really?
potatoes. Through here. Yep, that's how we know we're in suburbia. You know why? I can't hear them. I hear my ears ringing. Finally, what? I've seen about a dozen of them. There's cicadas. Into the tree. They sound like ringing ears, but they're so damn annoying. Yeah. But they're so... You notice how I haven't said anything about going for a walk? Yeah. It's so loud. They're so loud that I can't hear anything coming. I can't hear a bike coming up behind me. And, you know, I like to give myself some some space between me and the edge yeah. because of obstacles and stuff yeah. and if there you know if there's a bike or, or a particularly fast runner or a big group of runners what i do is i get to the side and i wait for them to pass well i can't hear them coming up behind me over them damn cicadas So not only is it annoying, not only does it make it harder to socialize with people like I like, but it's also unsafe. And that is what we don't do. Yep. Okay? Yep. Don't you agree that it's not really safe to go on the greenway when you can't hear people coming up behind you? I do agree. Hey, Daddy. Yes, sir. When we get to Home Depot, I gotta give some of this beer back. I made sure I told you long before we got there. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Well, ever since I went on a diet, which hasn't been too long, I haven't been able to take a shit. Uh, Mouth that doesn't swallow, asshole that doesn't shit. <laughs> yep. Just like there's a saying that my, uh, this guy on YouTube, I know he, he um, he's a uh, travel Longer. He goes around and he makes you know, informational. He he he's a travel channel, and um, he made a video about cruises and saying that the bathrooms are small. And then, you know, where are we going? Uh, uh, the bank. Home Depot. Why are we turning on Carmel? We're not turning on Carmel. It feels like it. No, I just got out of it. The traffic on the right seems to be more plugged than the traffic of the left lane. Oh. So he said that, um, he was saying, well, the bathrooms being small could be a problem because, as my buddy says, he, something in some European language, but it translates to, he who eats a lot, shits a lot. <laughs> somebody who shits a lot. Does he also eat a lot? Yeah. I think I know who that is too. Yeah. I love 
I think he travels the world through food and beer. Hey, Daddy. So the whole exploration thing that started with trying to find a route to India for spices. If they, if the Europeans knew that India had abundant spices, how did they not know that Mexico had abundant spices? Because Spanish food isn't spicy. So it had to have come from there. Spanish, Spanish use a lot of saffron, garlic, onions, and peppers, and a maters. Mm hmm. Where did the chilies come from? The chili peppers. Usually. As a Cuban, the first time I experienced that was in Mexico. But were they brought there by the Colombian exchange? Or? Uh, that I don't know. I know the cassava was brought into Africa. But and it's originally from the West Indies. And now it's like the biggest food staple in Africa. Yep. Although, if you're hearing impaired and never met one, you can easily con confuse a Nigerian for a Jamaican. Yeah. So there was, there was a lot of cultural fusion between the West Indies and Africa. The same as the United States, a pluribus uno. The what? A pluribus uno. Many in... For many one. Yep. Oh, this country shits in the face of our own motto every day. With that diversity shit. I, I mind that a little bit because it is just normal for me to hang out with Spaniards and throw it to everybody. You know what I mean? Yeah. But the one, the one thing that really turns my stomach and gets me beyond composure is equity. But you know what? Diversity is achieved through common interest and, and and like and stuff like that. Look at the look at the Panthers games. Okay. Yeah, it's a very diverse crowd, but everybody there is there for the same thing to see their team win. But you know, they beat you over the head with oh, racial diversity, ethnic uh, diversity. Oh. Equity. That's bullshit. I mean, equity. The NFL proves that that's bullshit. Mm-hmm. See, football is... I mean, basketball, if you're not seven foot tall... Jasmine Grill. Oh, they got one of them here? They opened a Jasmine Grill. Now open. It used to be the... Captain D's? Yeah. You want to try that sometimes? Yeah. They have one on... Um... I want you to do me a favor. 
Because I want you to encourage me, not discourage me. Okay. Let's say we walk in there. And there's nothing for me to eat. You go right ahead and eat. I'll have a Diet Coke, but don't get pissed at me because I didn't eat, okay? I don't think I've ever done that. No, I'm just saying it. It's a golf place right here. You know, we might want to walk in there and see if they got any B B B B. We'll do that on the way back from uh, from uh, Home Depot. Yeah. Okay. And we gotta go piss. Yeah. Would that help me though? Cause. My directional hearing sucks. Joey? Yeah? I agree with that. But I also agree that it's got better than what you got now. You have no way to orient yourself where that ball is. Well, in, when we go golfing with the Lions Club, they, they, show, they, they show you where the tee is, you know, with your club, and then you 